All right, so today we're gonna do an unboxing video fresh um, in my mailbox of the Giro Synth MIPS 2 helmet. All right, so before I do that, I want to show you my previous helmet, right? So this is the Giro 4A, it's an entry level helmet. Um, I used to just always have entry level helmets because you know uh, I didn't see too much um, too much need for getting a high end one for for the amount of money that you have to pay um, getting a an entry level helmet which you change you know every probably a year or so or, or a few years um, makes more sense for me right um, so I'm just unloading the stuff that I have yet on here but yeah so this is the Giro it's a little bit dirty you know it's, it's seen uh, tough times um, the Giro 4A, right? I, I bought this, I think, two years ago. Um, and the reason I'm replacing it is I had a crash a few weeks ago. Um, you know, uh, I had some scrapes, a bruise. Uh, my neck snapped a little bit, so I had a little bit of soreness there for a while. But when my neck snapped, I think I hit the ground. You know, I didn't know if I hit the ground with my head, um, but I do see some, you know, mud that's caked here on this part, the, the rear of the helmet. So, and it kind of coincides with, you know, how my neck hurt after the crash, right? So I, I think I did hit my head on the pavement and I did feel it, which is a good thing. The helmet did its job, right? Um, and, you know, the helmet on visual inspection, it looks okay after the crash, but the common wisdom is that when you crash a helmet, especially when you hit the floor with your head, it's better to replace because you never know if the integrity of the helmet has already been compromised by the impact, right? So you don't know if there are any micro cracks here. It doesn't appear, appear like it has any. You know, if I was really strapped for cash, I probably wouldn't replace this up just yet. But to be on the safe side, I'm gonna, you know, replace it. And I've, I've always been already in the market for a new helmet. This one looks really old and battered, right? So um, even if it's white and sleek, you know, you can't get that look anymore because it has so many scrapes and then it's a little dirty, right? So yeah, this is a Giro 4 helmet, served me well. Um, now, you know, it's going into the recycling bin or whatever, but uh, yeah, I'm not gonna use this or have anyone use this anymore because the integrity of the helmet is compromised. Um, but it, and also, as you see here, I have a small cat eye um, tail light, which I mounted on there um, via a what they call this um, uh, zip tie, right? So that it's sort of my emergency. If, if my if the daylight on my bike runs out of battery, you know, for really long rides in the evening or at night, all through the night, at least I have something to, to turn on, right? Yeah, for visibility, um, and it's it weighs next to nothing, so it's, it's not a big issue, right? So yeah, um, thank you, Giro Four A. Now let's look at the new helmet. Giro Synth. So this is going to be the first helmet that it's, you know, sort of on the high end for me. Um, so, you know, we'll see if it really does live up to, you know, to the cost, right? So I don't know if, it, if it's worth it. Um, the cost, it, this thing costs, I think, more than twice what I paid for, for the Giro, uh, for the Fori. So um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, time will tell. So now we'll do the unboxing now and then maybe in a couple of weeks or months we'll do another video to review the helmet and I can tell you about whether I do any, I do feel or see or notice anything different um, between the two, right? So is it, is it worth it to upgrade your helmet? Um, and the packaging on here is quite thick so while I'm cutting this away I'm gonna tell you about my crash, um, you know, it's, it's really stupid. <laughs> It's uh, I, I rarely crash. I think in, in my you know X years of cycling, I haven't crashed in the near in, in, in the last four or five years. The last crash I remember was when I started first started uh, wearing cleats, right? So um, I was just I was just uh, stationary, but I, I you know I was unable to to unclip. That happened in, in 2016, right? So when, when I first started getting into clipless. Um, yeah, that happened twice during that time, both because of the, the cleats, right? So other than that, I haven't crashed in pretty much, you know, 
almost six or more years already now. So, um, this, this is this was quite surprising actually for me. Um, yeah. So how did the crash happen? Um, it was the end. It was the tail end of a long ride, right? So um, I, I did a hundred. I think it's a 95 to 100 kilometer ride, just around the neighborhood, doing my groups, you know, spending time in the zones, endurance, a uh, few hours on the saddle, uh, minimal food, whatever, right? It's just, it's just a usual long ride. And I was, I was in the tail end. I was on the way home. I was actually around 50 meters away from my house when I decided to. It was, it was a little rainy, you know. Uh, it wasn't raining, but it rained the night before, so the roads were still a little bit wet. And I decided to sort of, you know, the streets where I live, um, you have the road and then you have the, the sidewalk. And it normally there's sort of like a curve to the sidewalk, right? Um, and that curve under dry conditions, you can easily go up there, you know, to, to sort of skip um, speed bumps, right? Or, or if you wanna have a little bit of fun, you know, just, just go on the sidewalk and then go back down, you know. I was traveling like 10, 15 kph, kilometers per hour. And yeah, uh, 50 meters from the house, I decided to, you know, not pass through a uh, pretty, um, uh, what do you call that, bulky uh, speed bump. And yeah, so when I went up the pavement, or tried to go up the pavement, my tire slipped. And you know, instead of going up the pavement, I just slipped. Um, and yeah, I, I crashed <laughs> with, you know, a little bit of injury. Um, and it's funny. Um, my Garmin sent a text uh, notification to my wife, who was at the time running uh, in the same subdivision as well, but she didn't check her phone. So um, luckily, it wasn't too serious. I was able to continue riding the, the last 15 meters to go home, and yeah, disinfected the wound. Um, you know, uh, I think I, I also iced the knee where the wound is because actually, even until now, it's still a bit swollen compared to my other knee right so there's like a big bump here um not sure if that's gonna go away but yeah it's been around two three weeks since that, I think two and a half weeks uh since that happened so you know uh, the wound is healed up um and that's pretty much it. that's how i crashed so you know be careful never take things for granted my tires i i, I got i calculated the uh, the mileage in my tire, my tires, um, it was around 2,000 kilometers for a pair of Continental Grand Prix 5,000 in the 32. So you think, you know, 32, you have much better grip, but you know, you never know what the cycling gods have in store for you for that day, right? So, yeah. All right. All right. So first, there's this smaller item. It's just shipped with the item. Don't worry about this. This is a <laughs> a bass guitar pedal, right? So I also, I also play music and if I can show you here. So I have my bass guitar there so um, The the distributor who sells uh, guitar parts supreme bikes PH um, Also sells musical instruments under guitar pusher. That's the name of their shop and yeah, I, I bought a pedal and if I hit a thousand subs, I'll also probably create a bass guitar channel if you want so which will probably never happen. All right, now we finally have unwrapped the Giro Synth MIPS 2, right? So what's different? Um, so Giro Synth, the, the, the first version, is the flagship uh, model of Giro for their helmet. It's like their, their, you know, their top helmet from five or six years ago. Um, and yeah, it's, it's meant to be aero, it's lightweight, and you know of course badass looking right so this is the second iteration of that and it's a little bit different because this one um supposedly is a little bit lighter also has better ventilation still has a little bit of air qualities but this one was released as sort of like the the second tier uh, line of helmets because now Giro released their top end um spherical helmets so you have the eclipse skip spherical and the aether I don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Aether spherical, which are their aero helmet and lightweight helmets, respectively, right? So those are the top of the line. Now, second there will be the second iteration of the, the synth. That, that means that this one is also a little bit cheaper than the older synth, 
because it's now it's no longer the top of the line uh, mod, right? So, um, yep. So if you can see here, it's it's uh, it has this plastic. I have a size medium on here, which I think on the sticker should have around should be around 275 or 270 grams. Um, yeah, let's see what it looks like and what's included in the box. So, pillows really. So yeah, of course the helmet is here in the box. I'll put that down for a while. What else is in the box? You've got, well, I also bought a Rocklock 5 LED light, which you can attach to the rear of the Giro Synth, right? So instead of, you know, um, using a zip tie to mount my cat eye tail light, I actually went ahead and, and you know, got the light which is meant to be mounted on the helmets, right? So, yeah. Um, looking forward to that and it doesn't come with the box right i bought this separately but they just probably put it in to, to, to be able to better um you know manage the package um inside here you have a little flap right there's a flap here which you can open and you get you know warranty stuff i think a sticker and yeah uh, instructions owner's manual right so i'm not going to touch that for now we're gonna look at the helmet itself, right? All right, so the color scheme that I got is pretty much very similar to the 4A, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's more, mostly the white and sort of the gray slash silver color scheme. Um, if, if, I, if I try to, you know, subjectively compare the weight, I don't see much of a difference between the two, right? even if this has a small light mounted there. Okay, maybe the synth is a little bit lighter and from, from a looks perspective, you know, it looks better. Um, I think they call this the, the banana, what do you call that? A banana peel, the banana. It, look, it kind of looks like, you know, uh, a row of bananas, you know, when you buy the bananas and they're all connected to the center. Um, so it kind of looks like that and what gives it that look is because the material that's holding them together in between is color black and right here on the foray you know you have the whites um sort of holding together the bananas right so it doesn't look as sleek as the synth right so the synth you just really have this and that's pretty cool um vents they look like they have the same number of vents um yeah oh one thing yeah so let me try putting it on it has the rock lock adjustment here which is has worked very well for me um in the giro 4a so it has a very plain looking retention system the 4a at least had uh, the giro logo over here if you can see that um it's color black which is nice here it's white but it doesn't matter because i'm gonna any, i'm gonna cover that anyway with the light right so um, I don't care if there's no logo there or whatever, right? So it's gonna be the light, it's gonna go there. I'm gonna try putting this on um, and see how it fits, right? All right, well, off the bat, that feels very secure and comfortable. Um, I like wearing my helmet a little bit, you know, tilted forward or um, so that when I wear my glasses, I don't have much of a gap in between. All right, so I'm gonna tighten that later, but immediately, what my first impression is that it's very comfortable. Um, and even if I don't tight, tighten it yet at the jaw strap, you know, it, it feels already secure because uh, because of the tightening retention of the, of the rock lock system, right? So um, I don't even need to get this super tight, right? Because it gets very uncom uncomfortable when you're eating. With, on the, with the helmet while you're under you're on the ride or drinking right or talking even or tilting your head you know that can dig into your skin pretty much during multiple hour rides so you know if uh if i don't tighten this much i still feel the helmet is very secure but yeah so there we go that, that's pretty much the unboxing um one thing that i wanted to test as well and i haven't done this ever is well, I have my, my my cycling shades here. I've never been the one to mount my my shades, my, my cycling glasses on the helmet, right? So I normally, when I go riding, 
and I want, you know, for example, it's getting dark or it's a cloudy day, I don't need much in the way of, of you know, uh, sun protection for my eyes. Um, I normally put the shades here, you know, while, while riding, um, either, you know, I put it there and then I just, you know, do this and I can wear it while riding and I don't have to stop. Um, and then same thing if, if I wanted to keep it um, it's secure. It, it, I've never had it fall from here. Um, it's not aero <laughs> if you think about it, but um, you know if you forget that it's there, you know you might lose it or scruff it up if it falls down. So maybe, um, according to you know some reviews I've read, the synth really does a really good job of retaining your shades. It even has this little rubber rubber thing here that's that's mounted on there. It, it's uh, I think it's meant to keep or to, to have some traction on the arms of your glasses, right? So if I if I try to put that on there, which I've never done before, you know, well, it doesn't do that very much for me, you know. So if I shake it a little bit, yeah, it kind of falls. If I do it um, the other way around, if I do it like this. Well, it's gonna, or maybe I need to be wearing it while doing that so that that's a certain angle. Let's see. Never done this before, but right, 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 right hold. Feels like it. Okay, so I feel the arms of the shades in my head here, and yeah, well, yeah, it kind of looks okay, but. It doesn't retain it very well, as you can see. If I you know, run into some turbulence or some rocky roads, it, it kind of goes off center a little bit there. You can easily put it back in, so it shouldn't be uh, too much, right? But it's not that's not working as as well as I like, or I could be doing it wrong. Let me know in the comments. Um, do it like this. Well, it's not even going in, so it's probably not the correct way to do it. Yep, so I'm a total noob at that. I usually just do this. <laughs> so, you know, you have dips. Um, oh, one thing that I noticed just right now is that the MIPS, right? This is a MIPS version. It's working very well, right? So it, it works even better because the 4 I have is also MIPS, but it has like just the plastic lining here that kind of moves a little bit, but not too much. But here, if you can see the mix layer, it's more solid, right? The foray has something like a translucent film of plastic there that doesn't move much. But here in the synth, you can see this white mix layer moves around pretty well, um, especially when I have the helmet on. So if you can see there, it moves. The helmet is moving, but actually I don't feel it moving, you know. You can see I'm holding the retention in place but the helmet is able to move a few centimeters in all directions right so that's pretty cool that's gonna help you know minimize the impact of a crash on your head you know it's, it's gonna help sort of absorb a little bit of the, the force right and yeah that's it that's pretty much it that's all that's there we, we didn't I didn't see any extra um, pads right so maybe you need to order that separately and the pads are mounted not okay they're they're velcro mounted on the MIPS layer right so you see the gray pads here so maybe you can probably order that separately from Jiro if you you know want to want to replace this um, and that's it thank you very much um, ride safe everyone and you know don't crash like me <laughs> bye